Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. I am your host, R.B. Kelly. Today we're talking about the impact your image has on the way people see you. So in the news recently, uh, the new princess-to-be in England, Meghan Merkel, she paid $75,000 for, for one dress for her engagement photos. And there are dozens of instances of brand new companies showing up that are promising to make comfortable, washable business clothes with big pockets, which if you're a man, that doesn't sound like anything new, but if you're a woman, your mind was just blown. There are dozens of companies popping up that are promising to make comfortable wear for plus-size women. The, and this is because the way our clothes look on us matters. The way our colors look matter. If you, if you watch a, a debate in the United States, uh, say we're looking back at the presidential election, you would have noticed that all of the candidates were wearing either especially up on stage for the debate, they were wearing either a black suit or a blue suit. And if they were wearing a tie, it was either a blue tie or a red tie. And if they were wearing a pin, it was an American flag. That's because our clothes, the colors, the styles send certain messages. Now, I want to make sure your clothes and your image is sending the message that you want it to send which is why I have here with me now an image consultant coming all the way from Australia. Please help me welcome Nikki McMillan, founder of Nikki McMillan Body Language and Communication. Hi, Nikki, how are you? Hi, Abby, so great to be here. I'm excited you're here too. So could you start out by telling us a little bit more of why your image matters, how you help people? Well, I always had a, in my previous career, working in journalism and in government and government and politics, I had this um, subconscious um, feeling that clothes affected the way that people connect with us and how we can build rapport. And it got me curious in terms of how that happened, which is why I got into image consulting. And now studying body language, it confirms that our appearance is a major part of our nonverbal communication. So it does matter, and we've heard, and, and yourself as a body language expert, RB, um, we are aware of so many studies in which we, we create and form a first impression of someone almost immediately. It's not fair, I know, but our brains are hardwired that way. So I guess if we can help people to understand how to dress according to the situation or the occasion that they have in front of the day ahead to be able to build that connection, to be able to put forward their message authentically, um, it, it does make a big difference in terms of how we perceive and also how we communicate ourselves, how we interact and how we behave. I think you bring up a really good point, Nikki. This is something I hear a lot. Earlier in your answer, you said, it's not fair, I know, but it's just how our brains work. And I think you're absolutely right. Um, even, even the little things, like, for example, this jacket, all right? I've had clients say to me, oh, Arby, I can't change the way I dress. I, I don't have a body shape like yours. These clothes just won't fit me. Well, when I got this jacket, it was hanging off of me. It gave me 20 extra pounds and it made me look dowdy and I had to actually tailor it in order to get the result I wanted. So what are some of the tips, Nikki, that you give your clients when they're putting their image together to, to figure out what sort of image they want? Going through the experience myself, Abby, um, I'll just backtrack a bit. When I worked in politics, I found that I didn't really understand why, but I found that when I wore a suit to Parliament sitting, so it's a bit like your politics in Washington DC at Capitol Hill, our Parliament sittings are in Canberra. I felt and I knew subconsciously that when I was in meetings with my senator or with stakeholders or other colleagues or even dealing with the Prime Minister's media office, I was taken more seriously. And yet for some reason I still do not know to this day, I would wear this dress and it was floral, it was very feminine, uh, and it 
I believe that it affected people's perceptions of me, and I was sharing a story that my trainer shared with me about the the partnership. But it also it it had this effect on me. I was more in my head. I felt not as confident, and therefore I didn't perform as well. So there's a lot of talk about uh, looking good and feeling good, and absolutely there is truth to that. But I've always believed, and I tell my clients, teach them through learning to dress their body, shape and colours and all that, that dress to feel good and you will ultimately look good. I mean, obviously there's going to be common sense. You're not going to be wearing fluorescent colours or anything like that. You have to have some common sense. But dress to feel good because you are going to look good because you're going to you're going to look more confident. You're going to feel feel more confident. You're going to appear more confident and approachable. So that is what I tell my clients. And it led me into a lot of research into enclosed cognition, which is really fascinating stuff. And it confirmed that the clothes we wear have an emotional influence on us in the way we behave and communicate. That is so powerful, Nikki. So what do you do with your clients to start the process of getting them to where they feel good in what they wear? There are four key components I've found from personal experience in working with clients, and that is learning your body shape to start with and how to dress your body shape. Learning your body proportions and how to dress your body proportions. For some people, it may not be a big deal, but other people may be more self-conscious about it. They may have short legs, so it can sometimes be in their head. So learning how to dress to your proportions so you can look your best. Absolutely knowing how to wear colours to complement your natural colouring. It is genetically determined through uh, our pigmentation in our skin, our melanin, carotene, hemoglobin. We can't control the pigmentation of our skin. So if you're wearing the right colours, the wearing colours can determine whether you're going to look vibrant, youthful, um, healthy, even young, through so looking dull, uh, highlighting your blemishes, highlighting your wrinkles, um, and, and looking tired. I don't know if you've had someone ask, I'm sure your listeners probably may have had this experience, and someone says, are you feeling okay? Or, you know, are you all right? To some extent, or in, in many circumstances, that could be due to the colour that they're wearing. And if you're wearing colours that suit your complexion, you're also going to appear more, you know, you're going to feel good and you're also going to look more, I guess, more attractive in a way. I think you're absolutely right. I remember in high school, I was going shopping with my mom, didn't know my style, didn't know my colors, super awkward as a person, but I found this really cool looking jacket that I looked at that and I thought, that is cool, I like it, I want to wear it. And I put it on and I was like, I am so awesome, look at this jacket. And I brought it out to show my mom, and she was like, "Ugh, no, it's not your color. And it was this dark color that just like drained all the color from my face, made me look really pale and sallow. And I was devastated because I loved the look of this jacket, but it did not love the look on me. That's right. There, um, we talk about in colours um, eye enhancers, which I'm happy to share this tip with your clients or your listeners. Is and um, wear colours. Eye enhancers are colours that are similar to your colour, so they make your eyes stand out more. So if, ideally, if we communicate obviously non-verbally more than sixty, at least sixty percent of the time, and. We I know hands are very important, but we do have a lot of contact and communication up here. So when we're talking to someone, we ideally want them to focus up here. And so by wearing colours that enhance your eyes, um, that is a really good way to keep attention and draw attention to your face when you're communicating. And then there's also your skin enhancers, um, like teal. Teal is a universal colour, like if you're looking for uniforms for your staff, uh, blue, but teal is a universal colour that suits people who are both 
of a warm undertone plus a cool undertone. And there's also a great skin, um, a skin intensifier, I'm sorry, it makes your skin look really, um, it just enhances your skin. It makes it look healthy, if that makes any sense. And then you have red, different shades of reds, according, again, to your undertone, that if you're being stuck in hospital, for example, I think it's like the Nixon-Kennedy debate that we studied. Nixon was, um, of course, he's not going to wear red in a presidential debate, but say you've been in hospital and you're, you're drained and you're, you're looking pale, wearing a red, um, again, best in your colours that complement your profile will give you more of a healthy glow. So there are a couple of tips just to take on board. And okay, viewers, you don't know this, but I actually met with Nikki a few weeks ago and she did a, like, a mini style consultation with me, which is why you'll notice if you look back through the past few episodes, I'm either wearing a blue suit or a blue shirt because she told me to wear eye enhancing colors and my eyes are blue. So I am already following her advice. But I absolutely agree with you, Nikki. It makes such a big difference. Just some colors, they just make you pop and some colors don't. But I've noticed for me, even the colors that do really suit my skin or some of the ones that really suit my eyes, they don't seem to suit my personality. So in, the, in that instance for you, would you, what advice would you give someone? It depends, uh, you can wear different um, shades of colors. Uh, you could inject patterns or different styles to suit your personality. I mean, when you you get your colours done, I mean, we have a swatch, we do a swatch this month, and that's 50 colours, that's like at least 50 or some 50,000 colours that a client can wear. It's all about wearing colours that are in harmony with you. You don't have to wear an exact colour, just wear colours that are in harmony with you. But also, understanding the meaning of colour as well, particularly if you're in a leadership role. Like I was interested when you mentioned the, the US campaigns. I actually spent some time in the States in the congressional elections back in 2002 and was fascinated then about the red and blue ties. And again, politics here in Australia, they're not so regimented in terms of the colours of their ties, but our Prime Minister, uh, Matthew Turnbull, wears uh, orange, or orange ties. And that, as um, for those who wear psychology, psychology colours, it, it means uh, energy and enthusiasm. And our Prime Minister's agenda is innovation, and that's something he's really passionate about. So I don't, I'm pretty sure it's an intentional thing that he wears. Uh, I'm sure he's had a professional consult with a stylist. Maybe not, but he, that colour that he wears is his branding of what his agenda is. And it's like that, yeah, as you said, in uh, the US politics, I and mean, red, um, it does signify power. Um, if you find, like, they're going to war, and you've got the president announcing you're going to war, you find that he's more likely to wear a red tie. Um, but then you also have the blue tie, I means we're stable, we're in control, you know, you're in good hands. So the psychology of colour does play out there, and I think it's important in a leadership role to be strategic um, about colour. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. Theories. Yeah, you go. Sorry, Abby. I was just going to mention that uh, in our election recently, President Trump consistently wore black suits with red ties, which is that kind of power statement of I am, I am dominant, I am in control, where a lot of his opponents went for the more subtle, soothing, stable blue suit with red tie or black suit with blue tie to add that, that stability, that calmness. Absolutely, and wearing um, black and white is high contrast. Mm. So it's a very, um, it's a very, you've got this theory of yin and yang. So yang is very assertive and um, strong, and your yin is obviously more submissive. And high contrast, like black and white, is very yang. It's very, yeah, it's powerful. It's, it's, it's that, it symbols that. So I'm sure Trump was uh, strategic. In some way, mind you, his high length drives me crazy, and many image consultants over here 
in terms of how long you tie it, because it's distracting. Maybe it's distracting, which can also do not quite sure. But um, yeah, and again, that also comes into avoiding distractions. We have some politicians over here, and um, you know, sometimes I don't seem to be pedantic, but when you're wearing big, large prints, Yes, you want that to be reflective in your personality, but you also don't want that to compete with the message um, or your branding or what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really interesting how how the emotional influence on us, but also on other people. And with regards to colour psychology, I mean, there's so many views about that. There is this um, um, research... Um, uh, a popular marketing uh, research that quoted that 62 to 90% of our interactions are influenced by colour. And I dug into that a bit more because I wanted to know why, um, because so many conflicting views, and absolutely colour, our personal experience and even our cultural background does um, influence our, our, you know, our perspective on certain colours. But there's this really interesting uh, research by Angela Wright, she's a colour psychology expert based in the United Kingdom. And this made sense to me in terms of what happens that when the light strikes our eyes, it does so at different wavelengths. And those, uh, the vibrations from those wavelengths are then converted to electrical pulses that go to our brain. It goes to the hypothalamus cover brain, which controls that endocrine gland, which, as you know, produces our hormones and controls our hormones. So as a result of the different wavelengths of the colours, it affects us, it triggers a physiological response and therefore a psychological response. And that, to me, was like, finally, there was something that made sense. And it... When you think about it, I do this when I do workshops. I ask the audience, say, okay, which colour would do you think would be more calming if you looked at it for a long period of time? So I put up this red, this big green red, and then I put up the green. And, of course, green is going to be more calming. And because the eye struggles to adjust to the wavelength of red, which is why it stands out when you about red lights or a person wearing red or a red tie, and when you think about it, it makes sense. I haven't been an operating theatre, thankfully, uh, for a long time, but they used to paint operating theatres green. So when surgeons were immersed in red while operating, when they looked up, I'm sure subconsciously, and they saw colours like all the experts, the green surroundings gave their eyes a rest in red. It was really, really fascinating. And it makes a lot of sense as to why people think, Red can be intimidating in large amounts. Interesting. Wow. All right, that is a lot to chew on. So, viewers, we are going to be right back. I am RV Kelly. You are watching Out of the Comfort Zone with guest Nikki McMillan about the subtle way our clothes influence our emotions. We'll be back in one minute. See you. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Hey, aloha. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hello. Welcome back to Out of the Comfort Zone. I'm your host, R.B. Kelly, and I'm here with Nikki McMillan, who is an Australian image consultant, talking about the subtle way your clothes and your outer appearance affects not only your emotions, but the emotions of the people around you. Now, when we left off, Nikki was telling us about how surgeons 
um, the way we see, ah, it was so cool. All right, so um, surgeons, the way they see red, like it's hard for our eyes to see and it can actually stress your eyes out, which is why if you're in a hospital now, you'll notice a lot of the doctors, they're wearing subtle blue or subtle green scrubs to give relief to the eyes so that they're more accurate during operating, um, the operating procedure. So Nikki, welcome back. I really am excited you're here. But I also wanted to ask you about how you arrived at your current look. I touched on it before in terms of my experience working in politics. And um, I also, so I, I got a little bit curious. And in terms of why I left politics, I just, I just, I guess I thought, well, if I'm going to work in the same long hours to help someone else live their aspirations, I might as well do it myself and go into business. Of course, I really didn't have any idea what I was going to do. But my curiosity, that subconscious curiosity in terms of the emotional influence of clothes, um, combined with some body image issues, um, prompted me to go see an image consultant myself. And that was a life changing experience. And it mm -hmm. wasn't an overnight transformation, but I became confident in my own skin to the point, I guess, I can go on the beach now and not give a toss about what people think about what I look like in my in my talks. Of course, we think people are looking at us, but we know they don't. <laughs> they're not. But there was a lot of mind stuff going on there, and it, it was a life-changing experience. I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. If I can help people um, feel confident within themselves and therefore become a better person, better versions of themselves, then yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. So I guess that's how I got into image consulting and then the next step was body language and communication and bringing it all together, which I guess what image consulting is all about. It's helping you to manage your image so you can be the best version of yourself. That is powerful. So Nikki, I'm, I'm curious. I'm sure you've had people be like, oh, my image doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter how I dress. When you when you meet up with those people, what do you tell them? You just have to respect it. I mean, people who come to me are the ones that want the help. I mean, you, it's actually quite funny. I had a meeting with two absolutely gorgeous uh, entrepreneurs um, on Monday, and they were really stressed out. Oh my gosh, what do you wear to a meeting with a stylist? I mean, I'm not a stylist, I'm a music consultant, but. I do find that people kind of get stressed out, and then it kind of breaks them out even more when you, you say that you're a body language <laughs> study people. So um, you have to really reassure them that it's okay, right, just relax. But I guess you could offer advice, but really they, they just have to realize it themselves, or you just have to do it diplomatically. I mean, if it was my boss to me, this is a really... When I was looking at these entrepreneurs, I never thought about this particular experience. When I worked for a cabinet minister, that's probably equivalent to you have secretaries, don't you, um, at federal level, so you the secretaries of transport or whatever. In here, in, in Australian politics, they're called ministers. And I was working for the environment minister, he was a cabinet minister, and I dealt with the regional media as well as with the press gallery. But... This minister came in to me because we travelled to uh, regional areas a lot and we were also rezoning the Great Barrier Reef, which was quite contentious. And I'm sure that your listeners are very familiar with the Great Barrier Reef. It's an iconic environmental part of Australia. And um, as a result of that policy change, there were a lot of angry fishermen. And David came in and he would ask, what do I wear to regional areas? And I'm glad he asked because had he worn a suit, he wore a black suit then, had he worn a suit up there to those meetings, very controversial meetings with those angry recreational fishermen, it would have inflamed the situation more. So that, I guess, in terms of politicians and leaders, and that's who I help, absolutely. It's all about being strategic, but being yourself in terms of what message do you want to send be it a meeting, be it a pitch or whatever. And even myself, when I'm at meetings, I don't ever think of, I think, well, how am I going to dress to make myself feel confident? Um, there was an experience just recently with some meetings with um, some personalities who were very alpha and very dominant. And I, I thought I had dressed 
I, I knew I dressed appropriately, but I think I should have gone more, um, sort of dressed more assertively, I guess, because I felt like it was really weird. I just didn't feel like I was myself as much as what I was previously when I wore a leopard print, classy to the foot of the road, a leopard print, um, very yang top which is reflective of my personality. Even though I'm introverted, I do have these dramatic elements to my personality. I hope that makes sense. That does make sense. And you know, Nikki, that reminds me of, okay, sometimes I will go out, like, okay, so today I'm wearing a suit, but sometimes maybe I'm going out to get a drink, maybe I'm on a, not necessarily a day off, but I'm doing back office work. And on those days, I'm not wearing a suit. But when I go out, even if, um, even if my makeup is the same, my hair is the same, my accessories are the same, but I change my shirt, so I'm wearing a sweatshirt instead of a blazer, people think I'm in college, or they think I'm a student, instead of the way they see me when I go out in a suit. They see me as a professional, they see me as an expert. So I'm right on with you, that when you've got an event coming up, and there's a message you want to send, and a way you want to be seen, you have to figure out what is the message I'm sending? What do I want people to assume when they first meet me? And then you go to your closet and you find an outfit that says that and you wear it. So Nikki, can you, I loved your story about the politician. Can you tell us any more stories about your clients? Uh, about my clients? Um, I, just, I guess I would just add some examples of from your yeah, political experience. Um, I, I sort of, a lot of my clients are business or branding or um, going for a job site. I have a client today going for um, a CEO role and we spent a lot of time with her style, establishing her style personality. And she's got that creative, um, dramatic element. But how do we subtly put that into your attire so you feel good um, while also coming across in accordance with the, the respective mm -hmm. dress code for the event, which, um, so it's, it's all of that. And then we also talked about um, the dynamics of the job interviewers, the panel, and she, she was concerned that she didn't want to, she felt like it was a dress code one, which is like you're all suits and whites. Um, she felt like it was a dress code one occasion, but she felt that those interviewing her were underdressed. That so was a bit of a dilemma in terms of, well, how do we, how do we address the dynamics of that without antagonising them and for her to come across professional to nail that interview and get that job? So that was a really interesting um, interesting experience. I hope, I hope she goes and kicks butt and she nails it. She absolutely deserves the job. But that's interesting um, in terms of clothes. The various studies on enclosed cognition, which is a fancy term for the emotional influence of clothes on us, which I touched on before. But one fascinating study, and I don't have the source here, I'm happy to send it through, but they found that when you wear suits, it actually found to raise our testosterone levels, making us feel more confident. So when you think about back in the 1980s particularly, I don't know, I'm probably showing my age now, um, it, the power suits. And I just spoke to my husband, Michael, he wears suits because he's involved in politics at a high level in our state. And he says he feels more confident in a suit as well. But this study was particularly interesting that it showed that there was actually a physiological, psychological thing happening when you put on a suit by raising the testosterone level. That's interesting. And that's something I can attest to for myself. Now, thank you, Nikki, so much for coming. We are out of time. But viewers, thank you for watching. This has been Out of the Comfort Zone with R.B. Kelly on Think Tech Hawaii with Nikki McMillan talking all about how your clothes influence your emotions. We'll see you next time. Bye.